etymology of some words, because there are hundreds, uh, in expressions with the idea of bear. Okay, so let's uh, first talk about vocabulary. Vocabulary is the point here. Later on, we can try to explore the etymology. So, what is bear? Can you think of any expressions with uh, bear? Well, let me get us something to sit here because I'm a big man. Not strong, big. Uh, okay, so first one would be bear the animal, right? Like a grizzly bear or, you know, three little bears. There's a cartoon, right? Bear, bear or something like that about a panda, uh, a white bear and a grizzly bear or something like this. Okay, that's not the point, but bear is this thing there, right? It's the, that big animal. Bear can also mean uh, something like carry. For example, if we say that a kind of tree bears a lot of fruit, so it means that it, it carries a lot of fruit, it, it gives a lot of fruit, you know, it puts forth a lot of fruit, right? And then uh, I think, uh, uh, oh, you can have, for example, I wrote there so I could remember, like a train bearing grain, you know? So basically the, the train is carrying grain. Okay, and then we can make another connection that is uh, bear as born. I was born in 1985. So you have this idea that my mom bore me uh, until I was born, okay? So I'm kind of giving up the etymology already. Uh, you will see that in all of those you have this idea of carry, okay? Well, but then we have uh, one or two more interesting expression. I can tell a person to bear something in mind, you know? Bear this in mind is don't forget. And again, the image is quite nice, right? Bear this in mind is uh, continue carrying in your memory this piece of information. That's nice. Bear with me is basically be patient with me. Okay, let's imagine I'm explaining something to you and uh, you couldn't understand even though I gave you several examples and then you say, okay, 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 bear, bear with me, please. Can you explain it one more time, that first part, that first part, okay, bear with me, right? Okay, I think now it's the time to open a little parenthesis, go to the etymology and then go back to the examples with bear. I think I have two or three extra examples there. Okay, what is the relation between bear with me and the bear, the animal? So it means that uh, the animal carries a lot of things, so that's why the animal is called a bear. Or bear with me is be patient with me like a bear would be? Are, are you sure about that? Mm, I don't know, it's a little strange, isn't it? Uh, because, I don't know, you have lots and lots of wild bears, you know, they're very fierce, you know? So, at this point, guys, it's very important to realize that something beautiful happens with this word. And that actually it happens to some words, not only in English, but in other languages as well. More frequently in English, because English is a language of multiple nature, right? English is a hybrid language. One day I'll record a video about that. But guys, actually the word bear is not one word bear. The word bear is two word bears etymologically speaking. One bear comes from from berra because this is Old English, right? So berra, that basically it is the animal, okay? That's berra. 
and that ultimately comes from Proto-Indo-European. Guys, keep in mind that in etymology and historical linguistics, I don't think that you'll be able to see it. I think maybe if you make it bigger, well, if you are on the cell phone. Sorry about that. But comes from Behar, from Proto-Indo-European, and it means bright and brown. So apparently, for, for Proto-Indo-Europeans, who are those people that are really, really, really ancient, you know, their language gave birth to all sorts of languages all over the world, you know. I'm talking about Greek, uh, Latin, Sanskrit, uh, Russian, you know, all over. Of course, Portuguese because of Latin and etc. in English as well. Okay, I, t I, t I said I wouldn't talk about Proto-European here. But keep in mind that if we start going back in the past and start digging and digging and digging, we'll get to Bhar, that is the farthest in the past we can get to, that it means bright and brown. I think I didn't finish my sentence. In historical linguistics, when you have an asterisk, it means uh, this word has never been documented, so we are guessing, quote-unquote, uh, we reconstructed this word, and uh, we believe this word did exist, or at least this uh, stem here did exist in Proto-Indo-European. So it meant there, bright and brown. Apparently, the, the, that, was, that was the kind of bear they knew back then. Okay, And by the way, think about it. We can infer many things about those or that specific people, the Proto-Indo-Europeans, just by looking at the language, right? So probably they didn't know white bears, right? Or panda. So we can kind of guess where they came from in the globe if we get lots of information like this. Okay, but that's not the point, all right? So originally it would be bright and brown, but here it's already in Old English, it's already the bear as general bear, right? Now, the other bear, which I've been connecting with my many sentences and my many examples, is baron. Right? And baron basically means carry, you know? Can be other things as well, but for our purposes, carry, right? So keep in mind, if a mother bears kids, she carries the kids in her womb until the moment she can, you know, release them into the world. Of course, this birth I represented here with my hands, a very dramatic birth. Uh, I don't think babies are born like, right? It's much more like, okay, that's not the point. Uh, so you can bear grain, a tree can bear fruit, and I can bear a grudge. All of them having this meaning of carry with me. What is bear a grudge? Bear a grudge is like somebody did something wrong to you, all right? They offended you in a certain way. And uh, you either say you forgave the person, or you say you forgot, or something like that. But, you know, you still have that, you know, you, you still kind of hate that person. You still think the, the person is kind, kind of annoying, you know, because you bear a grudge. Let me give you an example. It's a real example. And just to show you guys how far can bearing a grudge uh, go. When I was a kid, I think I was like seven or eight years old. I used to go to the neighbor's house a lot. And my neighbor's house was not one house. It was like a lot with six or seven families living there, right? And uh, I went there to visit my friend. I think at that time it was Simone. And, uh, but of course, there were people living in the other house. All of them were... Uh, uh, the same family, by the way. Okay, so one day I was there playing and I think I was making a lot of noise, you know? And then this guy called Marsu, I will never forget, you know? He just kicked me out of the, the lot, you know? If you think about it, guys, I, I think I was wrong. I think uh, he had a very young baby and I was making noise and because it, I was making noise, um, I woke up the baby up and he tried, he kicked me out of the lot. Guys, until today, I don't like this guy. 
all right? And Marcio, if you are watching this video, it's good for you to know that I don't like you, even though I know I was wrong, you know? I remember I got so mad, I went home, so it was right beside and the wall was uh, not very tall. I got lots of pots, you know, and start heating the pots and pans you know, uh, so it could make a lot of noise, you know, and I think I did, I think I did. So think about it, I, I was wrong, it was more than Jesus, almost 20 years ago, and until today, I bear an irrational grudge, okay? So that's a, an example you should keep in mind. Think about people you bear a grudge, you know? Uh, of course, another way to use bear a grudge you know, it's like uh, you had a fight with Peter, after that you have to fire him, and you say, look, Peter, I, I don't bear a grudge, that fight is way back in the past, but we are downsizes, downsizing, so we, I have to let you go, okay? So you may bear a grudge or not bear uh, a grudge. And uh, see, so the idea is scary, right? I'm, I still carry that kind of, uh, I don't know, against Marcy is his name. Okay, so, and then we just uh, need to explain one more interesting expression that is unbearable, okay? Like an unbearable pain. What kind of pain is an unbearable pain? You know, uh, when, for example, your wisdom teeth, those four teeth that are born in the back of your mouth, are growing, are getting out. Sometimes the pain is so strong, so strong that it's unbearable, okay? Again, the, the meaning of carry, right? You cannot hold that pain. It, you cannot carry that pain. It's too much to carry. It's too heavy to carry, right? Fast review sentences with the, all of the meanings. I'm not thinking about etymology anymore. I'm thinking about vocabulary, right? So, I saw a beautiful bear running in the park after a little girl. This bear here, right? Bear with me, please, guys. I know this video is already 20 minutes long, but I'm still giving more examples. Bear in mind, guys, that if you want to remember those expressions, it is necessary to hear a lot of examples, one after another. Even though sometimes it may seem unbearable to hear so many examples. And I hope, of course, you won't bear a grudge that I'm just putting and adding sentence after sentence after sentence. So don't bear a grudge, all right? Be my friend. Uh, Remember that uh, you can be born or your mother can bear you, all right? Some, uh, there's a part in the Bible, for example, I think Jesus is walking and then there's a tree and the tree uh, doesn't bear fruit. So Jesus touches the tree or says something to the tree and the tree dries completely. And uh, a train can bear a lot of grains, all right? 